Well, it looks like those Miami Dolphins got reeled in. What's going on, YouTube? It is October 5th, 2010. This is a Tuesday, and we have major sports headlines to get to, and we're going to start with my New England Patriots laying the smack down on the Miami Dolphins last night in Miami, where the Patriots have always struggled. They beat the Dolphins 41-14. to It was a sound beating thanks to a special teams bonanza by the Patriots, which was kick-started by Brandon Tate, in my opinion, the best kick returner in the NFL, who returned a 103-yard kickoff for a touchdown. Uh, to open the second half, which gave the Patriots the lead, which they never surrendered. Patrick Chung had himself an incredible night on national TV. He blocked a punt, which the Patriots eventually put into the end zone. He blocked a field goal, which was immediately returned into the end zone by Kyle Arrington. And then he had an interception, which he himself returned for a touchdown. So he had a great night. But special shout out to Rob Ninkovich, who had two picks of Chad Henney in the first half. And without those picks, the Patriots defense was really trying to get their sea legs in the first half. And uh, without those picks, I think it could have been 17-6 to or 21-6 to in favor of the Dolphins going into halftime, which would have completely change the outlook on the game. Moving on, we are going to talk a little bit of postseason baseball because the Yankees have excluded a fellow AJ from their uh, postseason starting rotation, um, which I agree with because I think the trio of CeCe Sabathia, Andy Pettit, and Phil Hughes is a little bit better. I think Hughes is slightly more serviceable than Burnett. Pettit is a veteran who's done it before, and Sabathia is arguably the best pitcher in the entire American League. He's probably going to win the AL Cy Young. But if you want to go who has the best starting rotation in the entire uh, MLB playoffs, I think you have to go with the Philadelphia Phillies, who can trot out Roy Halladay, Roy Oswald, and the invigorated, the reinvigorated Cole Hamels, which makes it an absolutely lethal trio that they can trot out game after game after game in the playoffs, which is why I'm picking the Phillies to go to the World Series representing the National League, and I think the Rays are poised to represent the American League. I think they have been consistent, more consistent over the year, and even though they don't have as, an exp as explosive a lineup, I think, I just believe that David Price is going to get it done, I think Garza can get it done, and I just believe in this Rays team. And so I've got the Phillies over the Rays in the World Series, just like in 2008. Our final story has to do with the lowly Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, how it stinks to be a sports fan in Cleveland. Now, according to sources, Cleveland was going to try and go after Larry the Legend Bird before they ended up choosing Byron Scott. Now, if I am the Cleveland Cavaliers, I need to get some star power back into Cleveland in the absence of LeBron James. Larry Bird, while not being as big a star as LeBron, is, is, is a legend in the NBA. And actually, he was a pretty darn good coach with the Indiana Pacers. Byron Scott has been a 500 coach his whole career. I don't know why you would go with him over Bird. I would have put all my chips in the middle of the table to try and get Larry Bird. But you know what? That's why they ended up with Byron Scott, and the Cavs are probably going to win somewhere between 15 to 20 games this year after winning 60-plus uh, the past two years. Sucks, sucks to be a fan in Cleveland. So thank you for watching Fighting Fire with Fire. My name is AJ Rose. I shall see you all tomorrow. I am out.